Praise the Lord and welcome to our Tuesday night Bible study here at the Refuge Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, 25200 State Road 46 in the city of Sorrento. Let us stand and present ourselves unto the Lord, thanking him for this another opportunity to come before his presence with thanksgiving. We enter into his courts with praise. Collectively, let's be thankful unto him and bless the Lord's name for he is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth unto all generations. Our God, our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, our kinsman, Redeemer. Thank you once again for blessing us, giving us safe passage over the dangerous highways and the byways, through many dangers seen and unseen. Now bless us tonight in this word study. As we look into your word, reveal unto us your perfect will, and we shall give you perpetual praise. All who love the Lord, say in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Before being seated, we ask that you recite a Bible verse one of your individual choosing, let's all do it under one voice. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Jeremiah 32 and 27. Amen. You may be seated. God is good. And all the time, God is good. Preferably everyone has received the Bible study handouts. Amen. All the back pieces. If you need one, just he'll get it to you. Amen. Those who are in person, those who are listening to us, on the conference line, we're going to ask that you would mute your phone, amen, so that won't be any disturbances. And those who, amen, are following us on live stream, you can go to our website, www.refugesorrento.com. And the same study material we're using here in the sanctuary is available to you at no charge. I'm sorry. It's a, they cannot hear. All right. All right, how about now? Can you hear now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? All right, we just want to make sure those who are on the line can hear sufficiently. Is it is it there? Can you hear me now? All right, we're just going to move on. This is a man the lesson for July 21st. 2020, we teach the Bible apostolic verse by verse. Amen. We're in the book of Romans following our Bible study curriculum. We're in the book of uh, chapter number 11. If you, if you read the Bible reading, amen, you know that chapter 11 is very full and the teacher is long-winded. So we're just going to talk about 16 verses on today and prayerfully we can cover these 16 verses. But the topic alone should remind you Amen, of the apostolic remnant. Everybody say the apostolic, the apostolic. remnant. Yes. All right, we thank God for the remnant. Let's jump right into the lesson. Amen. Romans chapter 11 and verse number one. Let's read. I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. See, the apostle Paul acts on question, expecting a negative answer. He answers his own question with an emphatic direct denial. This negative questioning pedagogy is used to clearly demonstrate that God has not forgotten his unconditional promises to Israel. Paul wants them to know of assurance that any delayed blessings are not a denial. How many know that God is true to his word? Because of the rejection of Christ, Israel is temporarily being set aside, and God has turned his attention to the Gentiles for salvation and provocation of Israel. Let's just back up to Romans chapter 10 and verse number 19. And y'all know Romans 10, because so many people quote that, amen, as their interest to salvation, if you believe in your heart. Amen, the Lord Jesus, and confessing with your mouth, thou shalt be saved. But what they don't realize is that Romans was written to the church at Rome. And specifically, Paul was writing so that those Jewish believers, that's what chapter 1 said, the gospel is to the Jew first and also unto the Gentile. Why am I bringing this all together? Because, yes, he came to his own and his own what? received him not. They rejected his message. 
But yet God did not throw them away. He just put them to the side because in chapter 9 of Romans, he said, it's my desire that all of Israel will be saved. And because they rejected him, they had to be put aside. And now he's letting everyone know, hallelujah, that if you're going to live this life, you who know me got to confess me. And you can't confess the Lord unless you got it. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. All right, look at Romans 10 and 19. Amen. The Bible says, but I say, did not Israel know? First, Moses said, I will what? Provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people and by a foolish nation. I will anger you. Now, God is talking to Israel. He said, I'm going to take people that's no people, talking about us, and I'm going to provoke you to jealousy. Yeah, God is a jealous God, but he uses the Gentiles to cause his people to be jealous. Amen. Paul is very proud of his Israelite heritage and inheritance. Paul mentions this heritage several times in his writings. Look with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse number 22. Let's read. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelite? Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Amen. Uh, one of the topical sermons I preach from this text is just, so am I. Amen. Hallelujah. You need to be encouraged. There's some stuff that God just done giving you identity with. All right. Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 5. Let's read. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. And of the tribe of Benjamin are Hebrews of the Hebrews and touching the law of Pharisee. In other words, Paul is just giving him, giving them his pedigree. He's so very proud that he was of the physical house of Israel as well as the spiritual house of Israel. See, Paul on the road to Damascus had got his life changed. So not only could he identify with the natural or physical blessings, he could also identify with the spiritual blessing. Anybody thank God that you are a part of that apostolic remnant, that part of those that can identify with what God gave to the apostles and the apostles gave to us. Yeah, we are Pentecostal. Amen. That is our experience. Amen. We spoke in tongues according to Acts 2 and 4. Amen. When the Holy Ghost came, we've been baptized in Jesus' name according to Acts 2 and 38 for the remission of our sins. But our faith is the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. And we earnestly contend for the faith. See, a lot of folks stop at just being a Christian. They believe in Christ. Amen. They have a, a expressed love for Christ. Amen. But the Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Oh, I'm more than just a Christian. Amen. I'm a Pentecostal Christian. That means I have the experience just like they did on the day of Pentecost. That's what Peter said. This let the house of Israel know assuredly. That this same Jesus, whom you have crucified, have been made both Lord and Christ. And then when, amen, in Acts chapter number 10, praise our God, when uh, Cornelius uh, got this vision and sent for Peter, while Peter was preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on them that believe. Y'all got me on tonight. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. In other words, the same way that he got it on the day of Pentecost, is the same way they had to get it at the house of Cornelius, and it's the same way you got to get it right here. It's the same. That's why we are not only Christian, we're not only Pentecostal, but we are apostolic. But there are many who identify with him, but because of the perilous time, they begin to fall away. That's why I'm glad I'm a part of the folk that's still holding on. Anybody glad you're still holding on? Amen. Anybody glad you're a part of the apostolic remnant? So this lesson in Romans is reminding us that, yeah, you got to have an identity, but you got to follow the teachings of the one who have birthed you. 
If you're going to be it, be all of it. You can't be part. You got to be all of it. I'm 100% apostolic. If you cut me in my bone, if you cut me in my body, I bleed. Anybody apostolic to the bone? I mean, can't nothing separate you. You, you, you believe this truth all the way. See, because I realize that delayo is not a deny. Remember I told you he's going to use us to provoke Israel to jealousy? But then he uses jealousy to remind us that you were grafted in. Amen. You came in through the blood of Jesus. You, you came in. You shouldn't be looking in here and looking back at God's, amen, natural family and looking down on them. It's only by the grace of God. Amen. I'm here on tonight. Anybody thank God for his grace on tonight? See, God never completely gives up on the physical house of Israel, even if they have walked away from him. All right. Look at Jeremiah chapter 33. We're going to start reading in verse 24 to verse 26. Let's read. Considerest thou not what this people have spoken, saying the two families which the Lord hath chosen, he has even cast them off. Thus they have despised my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. Thus saith the Lord, if my covenant cannot, I mean, if my covenant be not with the day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, verse 26, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I will not take the away any seed to be rulers over the seed of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. God got a covenant, just like he got a covenant with the sun. Don't y'all know the sun rises in the east? And it go down in the west. He got a covenant with the moon. Don't you know why the sun is going down? Amen. In the west, the moon is rising in the east. Amen. They are, amen, uh, 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 they are in, 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 in tandem. They in rhythm. Amen. That's what he, uh, Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, latter clause says, as long as the earth remains, amen, they're going to be seed time and harvest. That's why you can't let a temporary delay make you feel like you've been denied. You are part of the apostolic remnant. And if God has promised you something, just wait on it. If God told you he's going to heal you, amen, hold on to what the Lord has said. If don't nobody want to praise him, the apostolic should be praising. If don't nobody want to hold on to God, you know, in John chapter 6, Amen. Peter looked, turned, uh, Jesus looked around and looked, turned to the disciples, and they were, you know, <laughs> uh, folk were walking away because they were, amen, no longer getting the miracles that they were looking. Amen. Uh, they wanted some more fishes and some loaves, and Jesus had to challenge them. You follow me for all of the fishes and the loaves. And as the Bible said, from that time, many, uh huh, begin to walk away. They, them Christians start living, stop living an apostolic life. Them Pentecostals. Stop living an apostolic life. Amen. Hallelujah. They're just relying on their experience. They're just relying on their belief. Amen. But you can't rely on what God did for you yesterday. What is he doing for you today? Amen. What does God require of you right now? So he looked at his hand-picked group of 12. And he said, will ye also go away? And that's why I like Peter. Amen. Peter just burst out. He had a lot of mistakes going on. Had a lot of issues. Amen. But when the Lord asked the question, he's the first one. He said, where can we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Anybody glad that you were part of that apostolic rem remnant? Amen. You need to tell somebody, I don't have nowhere to go. I don't have, I don't have nowhere. Now, I'm not saying I can't be a part of no other group, but I have to give up Jesus to get over there. And I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. Oh, I'm going to be apostolic. Amen. Until it's all over. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus, because I realize he going to have mercy on me. God is a long suffering and is always ready to do what? Forgive them and receive them back. All I got to do is get myself right with God. Somebody say the apostolic remnant. 
All right, let's go on to verse number two. God have not cast away his people, which he what? For knew what ye, not what the scripture says of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. God will not forsake his own. I'm going to say that again. God, and I'm going to put my little spin on, have not forgotten about you. Now, that was almost the title of the lesson today. Amen. So if, if, if y'all like God have not forgotten about you more than you like the apostolic remnant, you can go on and just put down there a subtitle. God has not forgotten about you. Uh-huh. Just as any parent will not forsake their children, God will not forsake his own. God is interested in just one prophet that belongs to him. How many know God is concerned about you? Uh-huh. Romans 8 and 28, talking about those who are in the foreknowledge of God. For whom he did what? For no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now look at 1 Kings chapter number 19, amen, verses 10 through verse number 14. Let's read. And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Remember I told you earlier, amen, in Romans chapter number 11, hallelujah, amen, the prophet was saying, amen, he the only one, that nobody left, and he's talking about Elijah. Elijah would feel like, I'm the only one that left. Anybody ever realize that living this apostolic life, sometimes you feel like you're the only one. Right. Bishop Bonner used to describe the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say, we're the last of the Mohicans. Hallelujah. It looked like since he done transitioned, folk trying to make us a part of another tribe. No, we all by ourselves. We are identified as the apostolic. We are identified as the one who hold on to the truth that was given to the disciples. Now, I'm not talking about an organization. I'm talking about the organism. Amen. No. Amen. Anybody that love this truth, you apostolic too. You can have Baptists over your church. Just follow the teachings of the apostles. You can have Methodists over your church. Amen. Just follow the teachings of the apostles. You can have non-denominational. Don't you ain't got to be on no denomination. Amen. Just follow the teachings of the apostles. But the problem is when you take the name of the organization off of your building, but so you can do whatever you want to do, I got to raise my hand and say, oh, no, come on back home. Hallelujah, because it ain't but one truth, and you can't leave the truth to find the truth. Amen. So if God is required of one man, whatever he require of one, he require of them all. Everybody got to live the same doctrine. Amen. Jesus Christ is what? The same. Y'all with me on tonight? The same yesterday, amen, today, and what? Forevermore. Now, you remember how Paul was lining up? He said, so am I. <laughs> Can I get any apostolic? Just say, so am I. So, amen. Just like they were in an olden day, so am I. Amen. Just like after I'm dead and gone, and anybody who living the standard, so am I. Amen. I'm living this life that's not a life separate from anybody else that have been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever God require of one, he require of them all because he's no respecter of person. So uh, Elijah, uh, amen, is dealing here and he's feeling all lonely. And if you really study the text, we won't have time to go back there. He's kind of scared because a woman done threatened his life and she said she's going to kill him and got him running. Ooh, the apostolic remnant. You got a lot of women in the apostolic church. Got the men on the run. Oh, if you don't change the doctrine, the women going to lead the church. If you don't turn your teacher, the women going to do uh Uh-uh, no. We got some apostolic remnant women who ain't trying to get out of their place. Who ain't trying to be nothing but who they are. But you better not mess with them. Hallelujah. Because they got authority with God. 
Hey, man, ain't nobody realize as long as you operate in your place, you got the apostolic power? Come on and say thank you, Jesus. I don't have to be at the head. All I got to do is be in tune with God. And whatever God wants through my life, if God want to speak through a donkey in order to bring his people together, he'll do it. Amen. So come on, just put your hands on your chest and say, so am I. So, so am I. I'm just like that donkey. Amen. I'm available to be used by God. Amen. That's what David said. Amen. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of the world. You know you've been taught better than this. I'm talking about you who in that church because somebody done stepped on your toe and, and, and offended you and you left the truth just to go over there to put up with people who make you feel better. Uh-uh, you better go on and get you some steel toe shoes and come on back. Because I ain't going to say they ain't going to step on your toe no more. Amen. I'm not going to say they're not going to offend you. But I am going to say, amen, you need to know the truth. And the truth yes. shall make you free. Anybody glad to be a part of that apostolic remnant? Yes. That part, that group that Paul was talking about that going to hold on? Amen. Having done all, we're going to stand anyhow. Y'all still with me? Amen. First Kings chapter 10, 19. Amen. Verse number 11. Let's read. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And before the Lord passed by and a great and strong word, wind, rent the mountains and break the pieces of rock before the Lord. Amen. Verse number. Uh, uh, but the Lord was not what? In the wind and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. Twelve. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a small, still small voice. And it was so that when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, Why dost thou hear uh, Elijah? Uh, excuse me. What dost thou hear Elijah? Y'all still with me? Verse 14, read. And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down their altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Y'all got to catch this, because I'm a part of the remnant, but I'm not by myself. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Amen. How many know God got 7,000 more that have yet to bow down? We're going to get there. That's what verse 4 in Romans 11. Y'all read. But what said the answer of God to him? Now, in verse 3, it's the same thing. And that's why I took you to Kings to let you know, amen, it's called Isaiah, but it was actually talking about Elijah. And so Elijah is feeling lonely. Being apostolic, you amen, you know, it's a lonely walk. Because very few want to just hold on to this thing. Amen. But it's all right. You ain't the only one had to walk alone. Amen. You are alone, but you don't have to be lonely. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Because he said, I never what? Leave you. Nor will I forsake you. He said, lo. That's when you're feeling bad. That's when you're feeling down. He said, lo. That's when it looked like folk calling you a cult. They say you don't know what you're talking about. They just put all kinds of things you don't, all I'm doing is trying to tell you how to live holy. And you reading the same Bible I'm reading, but you're talking about, well, that's for yesterday. Don't you know holiness ain't changed? God is the same. He still requires of us to live a holy standard. Oh, I'm a part of the apostolic remnant. Oh, so am I. So, so am I. Oh, that's them crazy tongue talking. So am I. Amen. That's them folk who believe you just got to learn to put up with folk. Even when they despitefully use you, so am I. Amen. Because whatever my mission is, whatever my assignment is, I got to live the standard of holiness. Anybody that made up in your mind that you're going to be the best apostolic that you possibly could be? Amen. Anybody have made up in their mind you're going to hold on to this teaching like you've never hold on? Because if, amen, the very elect could be lost. Amen. That's the season we live in. Here. Amen. The, the elect are being deceived. They being lost. Folk who done taught you stuff all of a sudden come come up. Well, that's not relevant. When the Bible that became irrelevant, when the Bible became, amen, not able to speak, the Bible is from everlasting. Y'all don't hear me tonight. 
amen, to everlasting. No, I might not have the best English. No, I might not, amen, be the smoothest talking. But am what I'm saying, can you verify in Scripture? Amen. Can you, amen, you know, that's what they told, amen, uh, uh, in the Sunday school lesson, we were uh, dealing with Samuel. And Samuel was kind of upset about the same point. I'm telling you that apostolic walk a lonely walk. He said, well, how can Samuel be an apostolic? See, you didn't catch it. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. Just like the apostles that were called by Jesus, they had to live the same holiness that the prophets, amen, that were chosen by God had to live. And so Samuel is representative of a transition, God going from the period of the judges to the period of the rulership of king. And so God is using you. Yeah, methods are many. Principles are few. Methods are always. I, you want to change the method. I don't have no argument with you. But when it comes to the principle, when you're telling people it's all right, when the Bible say it's not all right, oh, I'm a part of the apostolic remnant. Anybody going to hold on to the truth? Amen. Now, if you hold on to the truth, I'm telling you, folks going to despise you. They're going to say you're mean. They're going to say you're in, in compassionate. But Elijah is here saying, I'm jealous. Israel have left. They have, amen, torn down the altars. They, they, they have removed the, the standards. They've gone away. And, and, and I'm the only one left. The next time you feel like you're the only one that left, just go on back to uh, Romans chapter 11 and verse number 4. What said the answer of God to him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Anybody glad to be a part of God? 7,000. <laughs> Woo! Amen. Y'all know Pat Roberts, he got the 700 club. Amen. Um, uh, Earl Carter came with the 7,000 club. <laughs> Amen. He used this scripture here to say, I'm part of the 7,000. Amen. The seven just means that number of completely. How many realize God got a group? He got a number that no man can number. Amen. How, how many just glad to be in the number? I'm glad, glad to be in the number. Y'all go with me to verse number five. Read. Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And this is what I share with the ministers all the time. If God call you, there's somebody he's attached to your voice. So preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove and rebuke with all long suffering. God got an assignment for you. You are part of the apostolic teaching. There's a succession. It was built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. They might not never give you a title. You got this big old cross, amen, but you don't want to carry your cross. You got the ring, you got the signet, you got the mitre. Hey Amen. You got all of that stuff. You done looked at some book. Hey Amen. To try to find out how to be a bishop. And you spend more time reading what man say than obeying what God has already told you. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Right now, I'm going to empty out. Amen. The majority of them bishop board right now. Amen. The Bible say the bishop got to be the husband of one wife. I just done messed them up because almost everybody in there got more than one wife. I know y'all don't like this apostolic remedy. Huh? Got to be the husband. Then you even sitting up with some women who call themselves bishops. Now you know how they're going <laughs> to... But, but, but then you say something wrong with me. You say, I, did, I didn't write the Bible. You say, I'm interpreting. No, 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 no. I'm not interpreting this wrong. You have changed. You have removed the standard. You have weakened. Now... Am I saying that God can't use a woman? Am I saying that God can't speak to whoever he... No, I didn't say that. What I'm saying is that you desirous of a title. And the problem in the book of Revelation... I'm trying to get back, Lady McCoy. <laughs> in Revelation chapter number two... Hey Amen, you know, I'm trying to stay on schedule here, but it really get the floor. Somebody said the apostolic remnant. That's why I only did 16 verses, because I knew I was going to have a little problem. Amen. He said, I, I got a problem with the angel of the church of Thyatira. You know, the angel has always been male gender in the Bible. So he's saying, you allow that woman, Jezebel, who called herself a prophetess,
to teach and seduce my So you allow this. So the problem is not with Eve. God held Adam accountable. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Amen. So women can do all kinds of stuff. And God, amen, still hold the, the man in, 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 in accountable, amen, for putting it in check. That's why I'm telling you, if you're part of the apostolic remnant, you better thank God that God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of man, and man is the head of the woman. And if we can all just honor our head, come, so am I. So am I. all I'm going to do is honor my head. That's all. That's all I'm doing. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. And my head tells me, amen, I can't beat my wife in her head and think that God is pleased with me. Amen. Because if whoever is above me should pull me down, amen, choke me, amen, and let me know this is not of God. I don't care how talented you are. Hallelujah. You better change your behavior. How many know God requires us to live a holy standard? Are y'all listening on tonight? Somebody just say holiness without. No man can see the Lord. All right. We are thankful to God for his goodness and kindness and how he has blessed us. Only what we do for Christ will last. Heaven and earth is going to do what? Pass away. Amen. But God's word is going to stand how long? How is it going to stand? It's them 7,000. Look at your neighbor and say there's 7,000 more. There's 7,000. Amen. There's 7,000 more. The next time that you feel like you are lonely and nobody else, Amen, because that's, that, that's when you feel like you're the only one that got the revelation. You're the only one that's holding on to the truth. You're the only one. You can't fellowship with nobody. Uh-uh, God always got somebody. He, matter of fact, he got seven things. He got a complete number. He got folk that are out there. So never get so that scripture is given to you for private interpretation. I know I preach positive, but I realize I ain't the only one who preached like this. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You just keep on preaching. God going to find somebody else to bear witness. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, say, so am I. So am I. I'm one of them that bear witness. Yeah, say, yeah, I, well, you say you apostolic. I'm apostolic too. Amen. You say you believe in one husband, one wife. Say, I believe that too. You say you believe in the baptism of Jesus. I said, that's me too. God always got somebody that's going to bear witness. Amen. And if you can't find nobody to bear witness, you better check yourself. Because the scriptures say every word of God. It's going to be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. That's why we need one another. That's why we have organization. That's why the organization is not built on personality. You in an organization and there's one person that make all the decisions and you and don't nobody else have no power, no authority. That ain't God. We got to be able to check one another. Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. They got to be balances. How many know everybody got to give an account? Huh? When you the only one that got to give an account to yourself, you, you your own judge, jury, and the whole nine yards, then you going to tell everybody else? You say, well, people don't live like that today. Oh, just go to the Vatican when they open it up. Whatever the Pope says, that's what every Catholic got to do. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. That lets you know that ain't of God right now because God didn't want even no kings to be over his people. He didn't want no authority to be there. A preacher is not over God's people like lords over God's heritage. He's just a representative of God to the people. At best, I'll be your pastor. I'll never be your God. Got folk, y'all in these big old chairs, marching them down the aisle like they some big king. Y'all need to get up there. <laughs> the apostolic church, I'm telling you, we've gone too far. I'm a bishop. God knows. But, and, and now, you know, they come up with all these different things they want you to be. Uh, no, I'm telling y'all, I, I, at best, I got this robe on. But I ain't going no further. I ain't putting nothing on my head. I ain't putting all that, all that other stuff. I don't need no rain. Talk about kiss my rain. You better get away from me. Y'all don't like this kind of teaching. Somebody say, help us, Lord. I'm a part of the old apostolic church. I'm, I'm a part of that church that don't worry about how big your hat is or how big your house is or how big your car is. It's about how big your life is. Your life speak volume. I was raised by people that didn't have much. Some of them just had 10 little shares. You can look up outside and see it. But the glory of the Lord was in the house. I dealt with people that, amen, didn't have much of nothing. Amen. But they had truth and integrity, had honesty. 
Amen. Now you got everything. And you just lie, cheat, steal. Amen. And backbite all in the name of Jesus. And then get mad when somebody can hold you accountable. Talking about you ain't got no power to judge me. What? The Holy Ghost in me will judge you. You wrong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It ain't going to be right till you get it right. Anybody glad of that apostolic remnant that don't mind, amen, correcting or being corrected? Anybody glad you're part of the apostolic remnant that don't mind being examined? Amen. Don't mind being challenged. Amen. Don't mind, amen, somebody say, where you got that from? Show me in scripture. Hallelujah. Maybe you couldn't pass the English test, but you could pass the Bible test. Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. Maybe they couldn't spell the words. Amen. Say all kinds of stuff. But they knew what they were talking about because they learned to read by reading the scripture. Now you got every version of the Bible. It is God I'm trying to stop. You got all that other stuff and you got all you got every kind of software, every kind of Bible reference. Amen. But when it comes to living a tap of what that stuff in there, all you got is an excuse. All you got is, well, they, 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 I can't find, ain't no love in the church. And, and I can't find nobody to teach me. I need a mentor. You need the Holy Ghost. That's what you need. If you get the Holy Ghost, he'll lead and guide you into all truth. I'm not saying that everybody don't need somebody. But it's not an excuse if there's nobody. Because whenever you feel like you Elijah, amen, and Jezebel got you hiding, Amen. Make you feeling like nobody is there. God is saying, I got 7,000 more that have yet to bow down. How many know you're not in this by yourself? Amen. Look at somebody. Point at them. Come on. Cross this physical distance. Point at them and say, you're not by yourself. Uh, all right. Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. I'll try to get back. Let's go on to verse number five. I told you all it, it's 16 verses and I'm, I'm struggling. All right. Let's read verse seven five. Read. Even so then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Somebody say the remnant according to the election of grace. Now we're going to massage that a little bit more through the rest of the, the, the teaching on today. Yes, we are here, but we're here by the grace of God. Grace brought you here. Grace is keeping you alive. Never think because you know scripture, because you haven't done wrong, because you don't drink, because you don't smoke, because you don't chew, because you don't hang around them that do, that, that somehow that qualify you to be saved. You were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We are saved by grace through faith. It is the gift of God. Anybody glad that God's grace is upon you right now? Grace is that unmerited favor of God that has been bestowed upon undeserved. There's nothing because you cannot please God in the flesh. You cannot uh, obey enough rules in order to obtain the righteousness of God. That's why by the grace of God. Ooh, anybody thank God the remnant? Uh, see, see, you got this folk in the church and some folk get in the church. And they're part of the apostolic remnant, but they forget that the apostolic remnant is here by grace. We're here by the election of grace. And so they know the truth, but then when they know the truth, they don't begin to glorify God. And they will become vain in their imagination. And God will let you with your Jesus name, blood washed self, amen, be turned over to a reprobate mind. If you ever want to see somebody who just messed up, get to know somebody who's an apostolic but is turned over to a reprobated mind. They know scripture, but just as perverted, amen, got all kind of crazy thoughts. And you be telling how somebody who got the Holy Ghost come up with that? Because they didn't give God the glory. They, they, they gave the glory to themselves. They thought that they were the only one that had the revelation. When you get to be like this, one, 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 one fellow, amen, he, he, he told the people, he said, I'm the only true prophet. And when I die, because there ain't no other prophet, God going to have to raise me up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> huh? Folk was at the graveyard. Wait. He's still right there right today. Split up the church. Hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thanks. Oh, but that ain't. You know that's some folk. The whole church built on them. 
Amen. And so when they die, the church die. That means your salvation was in man. Hallelujah. That, I'm telling you, it's a dangerous thing to be turned over to a reprobate. This is not talking about somebody that don't know God. This ain't talking about somebody that don't have the knowledge of the scripture. Paul said when they knew God, y'all got to study this. Amen. They did not glorify him as God, but became vain. That's why you can't have any kind of worship in the apostolic church. Vain worship. All kinds of stuff you bringing amongst the people of God. And they'll be more caught up on entertainment than they are on the word of God. The apostolic church is a word church. Hallelujah. A true apostolic preacher, his rhythm is so quick to the organist can't even get in there to try to, he be trying to get them to slow up. Amen. Because he be quoting scriptures. He be just going on. Amen. He'll amen himself. Amen. And he'll keep on moving. Don't need no organ to be, be ripping and running and carrying off. Somebody say, help us, Lord. Amen. Bishop Lawson was a flat-footed word preacher. Anybody who come up from under that tradition, that's who we are. We are word preachers. Give me the word. And how many know the word will, it may cause you to dance? How do you, you got to pause in your sermon so the folk can have a praise break. Y'all can praise him all other time. Hallelujah. While Peter was preaching, the Holy Ghost fell. Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. But no, you got to get the organ and the choir and everybody else. Amen. See, we done brought stuff into God's house that's not a part of God's plan. If the word can't dance them, shut the organ off. Amen. If the word can't dance, uh, uh, well, cause them to move, stop all that enablement. Amen. Because the moment that the organists don't show up, they talk about, well, we waiting to start church. Thought I'm trying to move. I'm a part of that apostolic remnant. I'm not against any musician because if you find a, an apostolic mu musician, you done found somebody who's a gift to the kingdom. Hallelujah. They work in tandem with the service. A true apostolic musician, you don't have to beg, you don't have to pry, and you don't have to get over there. That while you ministering, they just playing all kind of stuff, jazz club music, amen, or whatever they hear in their ear and all that old crazy stuff. That ain't no true musician. Our trust got to be in God. Oh, I'm talking about the apostolic remnant. Because you're not the preacher, you just preparing your sermon while I'm preaching. That, that ain't apostolic. Apostolic means you right there with me in Scripture. Because if I go down, somebody got to finish up the sermon. Amen. And not come along with something else. Because the word has already been established. You got to jump right in. Just like double dutch. You got to just jump right in and keep going. Hallelujah. Instead of following the teacher, following the singer, following those who are part, amen, we not on one accord. Y'all don't like this kind of When we all one accord, hallelujah. If you ever been in them apostolic so uh, services where everybody went on one accord, somebody might start a song and the song might go for 40 minutes. Hallelujah. Somebody else will pick it up. Amen. And they just go. You know, they might have been thinking they were going to sing something else, but they, they weren't going to change the flow of the spirit. Musicians that's right there. They're not trying to, amen, outplay one another. Almost like you're in a club. Well, it's your time now. You do this, and, and it's your time. And, and you do No, if the Lord going to dance, he'll dance you in the back of the church. You ain't got to run all down the aisle and then get up to the front where the camera is. Amen. Then you're going to get your dance on. Then you just get all kinds of way. Amen. We done brought stuff in the church that's not pleasing to God. I tried to explain it. I'm a part of the apostolic remnant. Amen. How many realize wherever the Lord touches you, you can dance right there? Yeah. Amen. I could be on my way to the bathroom and me in the bathroom going to have a prayer. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. But no, you see the same folk. At the, at, 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 it's almost like a choreograph. They, they know right when they, and they're going to run out right to the front. And then as soon as the preaching comes, everybody too hot. I got an asthma attack. You are all back there. Amen. Trying to get coffee and all that stuff because you don't want the word. Somebody say the election of grace. All right, I'm moving on here. Verse number six. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more what? Grace. That's all I was trying to describe. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Either it's grace or it's work. Either it's true or it's, it ain't no in between. 
Either you real or you not real. One way you can tell when people are really, really praising God is when the music stops, your praise stops. We all humans. Our bodies move. There's rhythmic. If you hear certain, your feet will go to pattern. Your head, it's just designed. That's the flesh. But how many know the spirit got a rhythm too? The spirit is flowing. And when the spirit is flowing, it's not based on man. Hallelujah. What? Man going to stop you from praising God? Hallelujah. And you don't have to be all disorderly. You can praise God. Amen. In your spirit, you can make melodies in your heart. You begin to magnify them. Matter of fact, in some of our service, that's just what I have to do. Because I come to worship God, and I ain't going to let you run me out of here. I'm going to worship God. Yeah. Somebody say, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Amen. I ain't going to offend you, but I'm sure going to disconnect from that foolishness. Because I can't be a part of that. Because yeah. I know me. I'm trying to save myself from this untoward. Anybody glad you're a part of the apostolic remnant? Do y'all hear what I'm saying on tonight? Don't be afraid to hold on to the truth. Because there's a deception in the land. Hallelujah. <laughs> if it ain't grace, it's works. And if it works, it's not grace. We see uh, something very distinctive here. This is established by two, an Old Testament and a New Testament book. God will save a remnant. How many know God going to save a remnant? Look at verse number 18 of 1 Kings 19. Now, we read 10, uh, 19, 10 to 14. Now, we drop it down to verse 18. Read. Yet I have left me what? 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed to Baal. And every mouth which has not kissed him. This one thing in church evangelism that I try to encourage people. Don't buy that foolish statement that everybody feels like the church is getting smaller. Because that's not biblical. Maybe your circle getting smaller. But God got folk out there. And they need to be saved. Come on and say thank you Jesus. It's about like the hospital saying ain't no more sick people. Don't you know sickness is a byproduct of life? Huh? You can eat as healthy as you want, but the older you get. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Don't you know just living, you dying? Now, if you understand that in the flesh, what about in the spirit? You can live as clean all you want, but you still got to deal with this dying flesh. There is a need for a preacher. That's what this pandemic, hey amen, I'm glad they call us essential workers. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm a first line essential worker. Hey, now think about that, are you? The first line operator got to be there before the church door open. You come fashionably late. And you ain't coming to serve. Huh? The first line operator got to be there before the hospital get there. I mean, get to be open. Huh? The first line operator can't leave just because the service is over. They got to be patient and wait on them. Doctor talking about, oh, I'm sorry. My shift just lasted and you cut open there and he having surgery on you. They're talking about his shift is over. You know, that's how some of us folk, amen, just responding to the, to the move of God. And because it ain't your schedule, you got to go to work. If you are an essential worker, don't you know a soul is more important than anything? What is your calling? Hallelujah. I got 7,000 that have not bowed down. Anybody glad to be a part of that remnant? Amen. See, the 144,000 who are sealed with the Father's seal in Revelation are the remnant. Remember once again that they have the seal of God the Father. And are the large and the large number around the throne in heaven at the same time have on white garment of righteousness and belong to the Son of God. They have been what? Washed in the blood of the Lamb. We cannot work our way to heaven. Salvation is a what? Free gift. Truly, even if the Holy Spirit must uh, truly even the Holy Spirit must woo you 
or you desire to come to Jesus would never be there. I'm going to be careful. No, I better not do that. I do it to my wife. Woo woo. Y'all see the Holy Spirit will woo you. Hey man, make you feel like. Y'all see how she's smiling right now when I woo 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 her. That's how the Holy Spirit will do you. Hey man, you was out there, but you said, oh, you talking to me? <laughs> you just talking to me? God of heaven done wooed me? Hey, I'm that God of heaven to let me know how much he really loves me. How many know the Lord love you tonight? Do you really feel that way? Hallelujah. Do you hear him calling your name? Hallelujah. Amen. If you didn't feel that, you wouldn't even come to Jesus. Or part in all of this is to reach out and take what God has offered us. In other words, amen, I can woo my wife all she want, all I want. But if she don't take it, I might find somebody else to woo. Because God ain't going to be by itself. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? How many know you better accept his call? The Bible say, amen, the day that you what? I hope y'all catch that analogy now. When you're a part of the apostolic remnant, you don't want me. The Holy Spirit done wooed you and you keep rejecting me. You know what the Holy Spirit tell me, Elder Baptist? He said, if you go to a house, and they don't receive you. He said, first, let your peace return to you. You don't want me, but there's a whole bunch of other folk out there that want me. Somebody say 7,000. 7. An apostolic understand that you will never be without. Because I've seen, amen, what God have done. How many know God will take care of you? How many know God will provide for you? Amen. They don't have no job, but if God going to feed you. Amen. You got to understand he's going to supply all your needs according to his what? Riches and glory. Y'all with me on tonight? And, and so he said, let your peace return to you. After you get your peace that you, you know, when you walked in the house, you said, peace be unto you. And then and, 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 give me my peace back. You don't want me? Give me my peace back. I'm not going to let your rejection cause me to not sleep at night. I'm not going to let your treat me all kind of way. <laughs> I'm getting my peace back, so to like it. You know, when you take your peace back from some people, they don't understand. They say, you're supposed to be saved. Yeah, I am saved. But the way you used to control me, you won't control me like that no more. That's how, that's how I know I'm saved. Because I ain't even worried about what you took from me. I ain't worried about how you treated me and mistreated. Because I was there, and you rejected me. But I let my peace come back to me. And then after you let your peace come back to you, the Bible says, shake the what? Now, I don't know. You know, it's after, anytime after convocation, I just be full. I'm just full. So if you shake the dust off your feet, I don't know if you were uh, moonwalking on the way back and the dust was coming or, or you turned around and you keep the dust off. Either way, I think it was something. Come on and say hallelujah. You just shake the dust. I know how you backed out of the house. Did you back out or did you turn around and walk out? Which way it was? Uh, do y'all understand what I'm saying? There's some folk you got to back out because you can't trust them. Oh, I'm talking about when folk can't control you no more, they'll try to kill you. They'll try to kill your prey. They'll try to kill your... You better watch them. You better watch. Keep your eye on them. Other folk, they just as happy for you to lead them as they... <laughs> And so you can just turn around and walk on out. Just get on out. It's best for us just not even just go on. I'm a part of that apostolic remnant. Just give me Jesus. Somebody say, help me, God. Yep. All right, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 8. Read. For by grace are ye what? Say through faith, faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Verse 9, not of works, less what? Any man should boast. Truly, we have nothing to do with who we are as we read in this scripture. In other words, 1 Corinthians 15 and 10. Read, but by the grace of God, I am what I just want to pause right there. How are you what you are? It's by the grace of God. Yeah, that, that's me too. 
by God's grace. Anything you got, you got it by God's grace. Now continue to read. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. You know, when you were apostolic remnant, you work hard. But you're not working, amen, to please God. You working out of appreciation of what the Lord has already done. How many realize if he don't heal your body, you're glad he saved your soul? If he don't put my marriage together, I'm glad he kept me in my right mind. I got something to thank God for. Because I'm not going to let height nor depth, principality nor power, things present nor nothing to come. I, nothing is going to separate me. A true apostolic, you can't buy him, you can't bribe him, you, you can't make him feel less than. He might be there and it look like, oh, that's all you got. Me and Jesus doing pretty good here because I got 7,000 more. Y'all remember, you understand what I'm trying to teach on tonight? You are part of the apostolic remnant and you don't need the world's help. The world needs your anointing. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Do not allow worldly things to control your behavior. Because when we're in chapter 11, I'm not, I'm not finishing, but y'all know chapter 12 of Romans, verse number one. I beseech you, therefore, what? Brethren. Uh huh. That you present your bodies. See how it all flow together? Holy and acceptable God. And that's just your what? And be not conformed to this world, but be ye what? By the renewing. Y'all catch what I'm saying tonight? So we're in chapter number 10, but you can already see what God required. Because in chapters 9 and 10, he's really talking to Israel. But by the time he gets to 11, he's including the Gentiles in. But when he gets to 12, he's letting them know whether you are natural Israel or spiritual Israel. You got to serve God with a new mind. Apostolics always adjust. Whatever the condition is, we done made up in our mind. Nothing is going to hinder me from pleasing God. Amen? True apostolic. But it's by God's grace. All right, Romans 11 and verse 7. Let's read. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Verse 8. According as it is written, God will give them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. These scriptures leave no doubt that God first must call us, and the Holy Spirit has to reveal to us the meaning. Or we too would be blinded. How many realize, amen, if our gospel be hid? Yeah, huh? Whom the God of this world have what? Blind. Y'all got that? But that ain't the only time to blind it in scripture. There's some folk who God had to put you in a spiritual slumber because of your rejection of him. It is, isn't it? That's why you got to be careful. Only people who can blaspheme against the Holy Spirit is somebody who got the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> somebody say, help me, Lord. Yeah. Amen. There's some blind saints, I'm telling you. They, they, they've been blinded by God. It is God that opens our ears of understanding to his word. He is our source. We must what? Depend on him. The beginning of wisdom is to fear God. The, this fear is to reverence him and to hold him in awe. Unless God reveals himself to us, we do not truly know him. He loves everyone and wants us all to love him. But if we choose not to follow him, he will stop up our ears and our eyes and we will not be able to understand he does not want us to come to him with our mind, but he wants our heart. Anybody got your mind made up? Anybody got your heart fixed? 
anybody going on with Jesus every step of the way. There's some stuff you ain't going to figure out. Mother Brent, you just not going to understand. I don't care how you try to do it. It just ain't going to make no sense. It ain't going to go. And people come and they'll be just tell you, well, you know, you, you, logically, and they'll be you saying, but the spirit told me. Oh, you spooky. You always talking about the Holy Ghost. That's the only way I know to live. Amen. That's the only way I know I got here, by the Holy Ghost. If I got a spirit that I can't feel, I, the spirit that can't govern me, can't guide me, I got a spirit that I, I got to rely on you in order to know what the Lord say. I don't want that spirit. <laughs> but I got the Holy Ghost. Amen. How many know he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High? Shall abide under the shadow. I'm telling you, lean not to your what? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. But in all our way, I've learned to let Marcus get out of the way because there's some stuff God do for me and he's just doing it. And the closer I get to him, the more I just fall in awe. And I feel just like John and any of the other apostles that have got to that point when they say, woe is me. Who am I? I can remember talking to Apostle Groover and just feeling his spirit as he was explaining to me the journey. And he said, who am I? Why would God choose me? And I can remember hearing Bishop Ross saying the exact same thing. Why would God choose? Because they know who they are. They know. See, we look at them one way, but they know who they are. Amen. I'm telling you, being apostolic will keep you humble. It'll keep you, amen, centered. It'll keep you grounded. Only by the grace of God I stand before you today. And for you to respond to what I'm saying, I know it's got to be God in me. That's why you got to recognize God. The greatest gift to the body of Christ, and it's also, in my opinion, the most neglected gift, is discernment of the Spirit. You ain't got no discernment. Folk can just tell you anything. And you just go along with it. But anybody glad for the leading of the Holy Spirit? Amen. I discern. Know the difference between good and evil. Hallelujah. Yeah, God, I thank you. Y'all hear me? God don't want your mind. If he gets your heart, he got your mind. Hallelujah. My heart is fixed and my mind is made up. All right, verse number... Uh, for, for Matthew 13 and 14. All right, let's read. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah saying, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. Amen. Verse 15. For this people's heart is what? Wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Ezekiel 12 and 2, Son of man, thou dwellest in the midst of a what kind of house? Which have eyes to see, and see not. They have ears to hear, and hear not. For they are a rebel. Y'all catch this now. He's not talking about the folk on the outside, whom the God of the world have blinded. He talking about those who are on the inside. You got ears. You got spiritual ears and can't hear nothing. You got spiritual eyes and can't see nothing. You're a miserable person. Because God wants your body to be given to him. But he, he done rebel against him so much that he turned you over to a reprobate mind. You in the church and on your way to hell. Oh, that's a sad commentary. All men of sin shall be forgiven. You taking communion every first Sunday when you do it, and you're eating and drinking unworthily. Eating and drinking damnation to your, I mean, right there, and won't stop your rebellion. Uh, somebody say, Lord, forgive me. Just Lord, forgive me. Amen. I'm not talking about from the past, because I pray you came in and were that already taken care of. Well, ask him to forgive you for what you're going to do. Come on, ask him in advance right now. Lord, forgive me, because I don't never want to get to the point 
that I don't think I need help. It's me, God. It's me. Altar call coming in. You think the altar call is just from them on the outside. That's all you're thinking about. Don't go to the outside. No. <laughs> that word was for you. You need to get out that pulpit and come on down here to this altar. Change your behavior. God help me. How many know you don't want this to be a rebellious house? Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Mark chapter 4 and verse number 11. Y'all still with me? And he said unto them, unto you is it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Uh, verse 12, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. This is because of their evil heart that Jesus does not reveal himself to them. All right, verse number nine. And David said, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Ten, let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. Recompense means to quit like men. First Timothy 6 and 17, read. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in certain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Amen. Verse 18, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. 19, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. I want to put a plan in here. One of the clear signs that you're not maturing is your inability to store up. Now, people don't like this kind of teaching. Because you just, as soon as you get it, you spend it. Not just finances. But don't you know, you can't give everybody everything. All your hope, all of your trust, everything. So when they walk away from you, you just tore up. You don't have nothing. How many know you can't put no confidence in me? Huh? God knows I'm going to try my best to lead you. But don't let my weakness be your weakness. Don't let my failure be your failure. You got to look to Jesus. That's why I try to get out of the way. <laughs> Let you see Jesus. Amen. There ain't going to be no personality driven. I empower. I try to delegate. I try to share. Now, I run hard and I work fast. That's my personality. But when it's over, it won't be in the name of McCoy. It ain't going to let you put your name in it either. It's for them other 7,000 who we don't even know. It's for those who are part of the apostolic remnant. Yeah. Anybody glad to be of a church that the name of Jesus is the greatest name? Y'all, Jesus only. He's the only one that matter. It ain't nobody else that really matters. It's not about you. The moment you start thinking it's about you, you you're headed around the wrong way. And that's what means you're going to have a problem. Amen. Come on and tell him thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. We see from these few scriptures that to whom much is given, what? Much is required. This does not mean just wealth and money, but it has to do with the knowledge of the Bible as well. If you know something, speak it. To, who, to know God and his word, and then, then to sin is much worse than the sin of ignorance. In the 23rd Psalm, we see the opposite of this table. Psalms 23 and verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me, where? In the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with all my cup. Uh -huh. David's table was a blessing, and theirs was a curse. They did not have their heart right with God. Amen. I don't move. I've got to move quick here. Amen. Lord, Lady McCoy, I'm sorry. Uh, verse 11, read. I say then, have they not, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come to the Gentile. 
to, for to provoke them. I, I, I can't do it justice, uh, Sister Lackey. Because, see, when you try to teach this concept, folk think you, you're going against the Scripture. But God used the failure of Israel to be the salvation of the Gentiles. I know people who taught me, and I don't understand this day, how they were so focused on God and just failed. But I know what their fall did for me. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? God will use somebody else stumbling to let you know. Now he God, he do whatever he want to do. Why? We could say and I believe that God knew they were going to fall. But I just don't understand how it looked like that we had everything together. Then boom. But that was for my salvation. And then he'll use my salvation to make the man that fell jealous. I've experienced that. You got out of the place. God saved me, put me in the place. Now you mad with me because I'm in the place. That's the apostolic remnant. That's why you got to shake some of that folk. Just shake them off of you. Cause you, I didn't have nothing to do with this. God did this. Anybody know you here because God put you here? Anybody realize you got what you got because God gave it to you? Yeah, I know you was ahead of me. I understand that. But your fall was my salvation. And my salvation was to provoke you to jealousy. God's sovereign. He do whatever he want to do. That's why when some stuff happens, you just got to let it happen. Because God's wisdom is far beyond yours. How many know his thoughts are not our thoughts? And his ways are not our ways. It's deep. It's deep. Uh, we see that Gentiles readily accepted the Lord Jesus when the Jews rejected Jesus. God still loves the Jew, the physical house of Israel. And as we have been reading, he will save a remnant of them. Amen. Acts 13 and 42 read. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Uh, verse 12 of Romans 11 read. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more the fullness. This is just God's way of allowing the Gentile believers to be saved. We Gentile believers have been grafted into the family of God. We are his adopted children. Verse 15, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby ye cry, Abba, Father. Everybody just say, Abba, Father. Uh-huh. Verse 13, for I speak to you as Gentile insomuch, as I am apostle to the Gentiles, I've magnified my office. 14, if by any means I might provoke to emulation them which are my flesh that might save some of them. I pray constantly for amen, Elder Baptiste with this new assignment. Because there are folk that are going to be so jealous. I ain't telling you nothing you don't know. I mean, they're going to have all kinds of reasons. But if you let that disturb you, that ain't on them. I'm telling you what's going to happen. But you're standing in a place that you got to look to Jesus. Because the same folk that become jealous, God will use their jealousy to help fill this church. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. God will use their jealousy. Don't you know it's good to have an enemy? I'm talking about a good enemy. Huh? You, you ever had the bully in the neighborhood? Hey man, challenge you and you overcome the bully. Everybody else in the neighborhood said, nah, I ain't saying I don't want to fool with that. You cross that spiritual battlefield and you come out victorious, there's some demons going to say, I ain't even going to try no more. Have you considered my servant Joe? Yeah, I, don't, I don't, ain't no use in trying. Because you got a hedge all around him. Somebody say, help him, Lord. Help him, Lord. How did God want to provoke, amen, folk through your life? 
Paul was actually commissioned of God to bring salvation message to the Gentiles, but he could not quite ever give up on his brothers, the Jews. Acts 9 and 15, but the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a what? Chosen vessel unto men to bear the name before the Gentiles and kings and children of men. You can see from this that his first call was to the Gentile. Paul in verse 14 above is saying that perhaps while he's bringing his, his message to the Gentile, some of his Hebrew brothers will hear and understand as well. Amen. How many realize you just got to preach the word? You just got to live the life. I'm going to give you one more scripture in a minute to show that Paul was aware of his call to the Gentile. 2 Timothy 1 and 11 read, Where to I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. Verse 15, For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Hallelujah. There is no better example of this in all the Bible than Ezekiel, where the story is told of the dry bones is found. In this account, we'll see that at the end of uh, God will bring back to life the natural Israelite, and they and the spiritual house of Israel, the Christians, will be a part of the family. The two sticks that shall come together are the spiritual and the physical house of Israel. Jesus Christ, their Messiah, saves us all. Now, it's 14 verses of Ezekiel. I'm not going to read, read the whole thing, but y'all know that story of Ezekiel because I done gone over. And the valley of dry bones. Y'all know they were dry bones. Son of man, can these bones live? How many know God know how to stir up the valley of dry bones? Yeah. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Amen. And God told him to prophesy to the wind. Amen. It looked like you ain't making no sense. Preach the word. Live the word. Stand up for holiness. Be a part of that remnant. And God will stop the wind. Hallelujah. And that which is dead will come to life. Amen. So, amen. We done kind of went way past my time in there. And, and, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't disciplined enough. I ain't making no apology for the word of God. Amen. But my, I'm just, I, I, it's, it's just difficult for me. Amen. I enjoyed that holy convocation to the extent that I, I just feel like preaching. Anybody enjoyed the holy convocation? Amen. So, amen. It's been the best part of my, 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 my makeup. Holy convocation just stirred me up. Amen. Even though it was virtual. And I guess y'all just the benefactor of my excitement. Amen. I just love the Lord. I love what I do. All right. So we're going to run through these questions real quick. Amen. Question number one. In verse number one, Paul asks, has God cast away his people? God forbid. Question two. What three things does Paul call himself in one verse? I mean, in verse one. All right. So he's dinner. He knowing who he is. You better know who you are. All right. Question number three. God is blank and always ready to forgive. He's long suffering, always ready to forgive. Very good. In verse three, what two things had they done that made Elias think that he was alone, uh, that he alone was left? Dig down the altars. All right. Very good. Good. Uh, God will not blank his own. Forsake. Very good. Question number six. In chapter 11 and verse four, how many had God reserved who had not bowed their knee to Baal? 7,000. Very good. Question seven. This remnant is according to what in verse five? The election of grace. Very good. Question eight. Paul says by what I am what I am. The grace of God. Very good. Question number nine. In verse seven, we see that who obtained while all others were blinded? The election obtained and the rest were blinded. All right. Why does Jesus not reveal himself to some people? The evil heart people. Uh huh. Question nine. I mean, 11, excuse me. In verse nine, David said, for those who reject the truth, to have that table be what? Made a snare. All right. Very good. Question number 12. In verse 10, what will happen to their eyes? 
Mm, Dark-eyed folk, they may not see. Question 13. In verse 11, we see that their fall came from what purpose? Salvation has come to the Gentiles. Very good. Question 14. Who is the physical house of Israel? All right, very good. And question 15. In verse 12, we see that the diminishing of them be the riches to whom? Very good. All right, y'all was working. Question 60. <laughs> when we have been added to the family of God, what should we cry? Abba Father, very good. Who was Paul commissioned to bring the salvation message to? Gentiles. Gentiles, very good. Question 18. In verse 15, what does the receiving of them bring? Life from the dead, very good. Question number 19. In Ezekiel 37, what does the story of dry, bron dry bones bring? Uh, the God will come back to life. Uh, we bring back to life the natural Israelite and they and the spiritual house of Israel, the Christian will be part of the family of God. Very good. Who are the dry bones mentioned in Ezekiel 37 and 11? It's the whole house. Everybody say the whole house. Amen. And question 21, what causes these dry bones to live in Ezekiel? The spirit of God. Very good. All right, last couple questions. Question 22, what is... Or excuse me, why is the whole house, everybody say whole house, used in verse 11 of Ezekiel 37? The physical and the spiritual house. Everybody say the whole house. Amen. God wants the whole house to be saved. He got sheep that are not of his fault. Them also will he call. He going to bring them. Just as sure as I'm standing here, the whole house is going to be saved. That's the apostolic remnant. Amen. Thank you for those who, amen, have stayed with us. Amen. Beyond our time. But uh, Bishop was excited. That's what Holy Convocation do for me. Amen. But today is a special day. On this day, 33 years ago. Um, I can't remember the time. What time was it? I, I, I forgot now. I know it was 26 hours of labor. Yeah, 26 hours of labor. He just he wouldn't. And when he came out, he had his hand around the umbilical cord. And he was in there playing. Every time he squeezed that umbilical cord, her vitals would just go off the chart. Then he will let it go, and, and, and they, they couldn't figure it out. Now I remember my baby just crying. Ooh. Ooh. And I went to crying right along with her. Because she was in pain. And we, we, we had determined we were going to do it natural. And, and the, the water had, had them broke. And the doctor said we got to do it. Give her epidural. And that's why um, I got great respect. For Dr. Timothy G. Gruber. That's what he does. He take that big old long needle. And he, as an anesthesiologist, they go right into the back. And it's a little place in between your spine. And, and they got to put it in there. Because, see, they got to, amen, lock her, but not stop her. Because the baby still got to come. And it can't come until they push it out. Amen. So she got still pushed, but they got to stop that pain. Woo! I'm trying to tell you how my oldest one got here. And today is the anniversary of his birth. I'm talking about none other than my number one son, my oldest, my namesake. The one who tells his mama often, I made you a mother. <laughs> Uh, Pastor Marcus R. McCoy, Jr. It's his birthday on today. So we collectively say to him, happy birthday, Pastor McCoy. Amen. And we thank God for his faithfulness, his commitment to truth and honesty in the kingdom. I have no greater joy to know that my children walk in the truth. So happy birthday, Pastor McCoy. Amen. Thank you. 
for those who've been with us. If there's anything we can do for you, just reach out to it. We are here to serve. Good night, all.